All right, thank you so much, Pastor Anderson, for this opportunity to preach tonight. And it's a really great conference. I really love this missions conference, especially the first day. It was awesome to be here, just the great spirit, and it was so motivating. And uh, tonight, obviously, I'm going to preach about the country of Germany. We've heard a great sermon by, Dar by um, Brother Dylan Oss. And he just kind of gave his, his experience uh, going soul winning in Germany. He kind of gave the, the good side. I'm going to give you the bad and the ugly side. I'm going to give you the background about um, our sewing ministry in Germany. And, you know, thinking about our ministry in Germany, one thing really comes to mind, which is the heavy persecution and oppression by Germany and the resilience and strength of a group of spirit-filled Christians just serving God against all odds. And that, this is the title of my sermon, Serving God Against All Odds. Amen. And you're here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. It says in verse 26, Verse 26, in journeyings, often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. So the, the Apostle Paul is basically defending himself. And the idea here is that you can really see who's legit. You can really see the character of a person by letting him go through persecution, through stress. You know, if you want to test someone, let them go through stress. Let them go through a test. And you'll really see if they are legit or not, right? So all these people leaving our church, you know, it's either because they are weak, wicked, or both. Amen. You know, that's it. And you know what? That group in Germany, that is the real deal. These people are the real deal. They have stood the test. And I'm specifically thinking of my friend in Germany. You know, he has wife and kids, and his house got raided by the police. And he didn't even preach. He didn't give, even get up. You know, he was just psychologically supporting, I guess, because he was in a WhatsApp group. That's it. You know, and yet he is soul winning every week consistently. Every single week, he's out there soul winning in the city of Fortheim. You know, and I'm talking sometimes to him, and he's like, well, it was so great when I was go, going soul winning twice a week. And I'm like, dude, it's okay if you just go once a week. It's okay. What you're doing is awesome. You know, you don't have to go twice a week. Amen. Like, you have wife and kids. You receive persecution w without even any cause whatsoever. Being in a WhatsApp group, you know, that's it. And not only that, but at the same time, in three different cities... Homes were raided of our brothers at the same time, so it was like a coordinated attack, coordinated raid in uh, January of this year, I believe. Mm -hmm. At the same time, three brethren got their houses raided, you know, for hate speech or whatever. And uh, both our preachers, Brother Moses and um, Brother Andy from Austria, they lost their jobs multiple times. You know, these people are really going through legit tests, legit persecution, legit um, perils. And also, just thinking of uh, brothers uh, who are coming to our soul winning group, you know, they maybe go to a church that's just near them, that, um, that they can reach by car or whatever, and they are getting pressured in that church every time they go there. You know, why are you part of that group? Why do you go soul winning? This and that. You know, that's stressful, going to a church where you want to be, obviously, among brethren and want to be encouraged. You know, we're here to have fellowship, right? But then people in Germany are going to a church and also attending our soul winning marathons, and they're getting pressured at the church. You know, that can be stressful because you want to go to church to be at least once a week in your Christian bubble you know, and be among like-minded people, right? And also just thinking of, you know, my brothers and sisters in Germany who are leading a godly life in a crooked and perverse generation, which is Germany. It's a crooked and perverse generation over there. You know, that shows character. And just to give you some stats, from January 2022 to November of this year, our soul winning group in Germany had 638 salvations which is only counting salvations of our official soul winning times, official soul winning events. This is not counting salvations just from personal soul winning. So it's 
it's probably like a thousand. You know, if you count all the personal soul winning every week without uh, plus uh, the marathons and other soul winning events, it's probably like a thousand, if not more. And all the people that got saved through uh, the Bible Way to Heaven online and everything, probably over a thousand and sixteen baptisms so far. And at least 131 sermons were preached in total. This includes sermons by Brother Moses, Brother Andy, by myself, and obviously Brother Dylan Oz, and um, Brother Mateus from Poland, who came and preached for us and baptized seven people this year. Covering 40 books of the Bible. You know, that's a, that's a good amount of preaching. That's a, that's a good, solid um, good, solid spiritual food that they are getting there. And I've counted seven full-length Bible documentaries that we translated from English into German, fully dubbed, fully dubbed into German, you know, not just... You know, sometimes, it's funny, in, in Europe, in some countries, like in Poland, they don't actually dub their, their movies, they just talk over the movie, but w without any acting. So you hear, the, you hear the English version, and then it's like... Polish talking, but they don't really act. Like, it, it sounds weird. And that's how they watch movies sometimes. But we actually you know, fully reenacted the movies like, with our voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seven, at least seven full-length Bible documentaries that have also earned us persecution. So we read in this, in this verse, uh, in verse 26, it says, in perils by my own countrymen, and that is especially true in a nation like Germany. That is a nation of oppression. And I was kind of going back and forth about the sermon title. Should I call it Germany, nation of oppression or something? But I wanted to focus on the people, like on the work that has been done. So I think serving God against all odds is a better sermon title, but it could also be nation of oppression. At the same time, though, even though all this uh, oppression, persecution is happening, at the same time, Germany and Europe in general is known as the Christian Occident. So we have the Orient, which is the East, and the Occident, which is the West. So Europe in general, especially Germany, is known as the Christian Occident, which is just, just really a, a traditional cultural thing. It's not a religious thing anymore. Germany is not a Christian nation anymore. It's just a cultural, traditional thing. And, you know, we have these people in Germany... They are all against, you know, Muslim immigration and everything. You know, we are the Christian Occident. But then they, they probably don't go to church, maybe some Protestant church. Most of them obviously aren't saved. It's really just a cultural thing. But Germany really does have a long-reaching uh, Christian history that goes back, you could say, to the 4th century. So even very soon after Christ, and obviously back then Germany didn't exist in the way it exists today, obviously, but... Even very soon after Christ, there was a Bible translation done into the Gothic language. And the people who translated this Bible translation, it's disputed if that was one guy or a group, but they actually developed the Gothic script just for the purpose of translating the Bible into the Gothic language. And I love these kind of facts because the Bible really stands above all history. Every time you check... You know, worldly history, the Bible stands above it. You know, you can always find something. Also, it has, Germany has a history of persecuting Christians. You know, the Catholics, obviously the Lutherans, they persecuted Christians. During Nazi Germany, there was no real religious freedom, obviously. In the German Democratic Republic, which was socialism, no religious freedom, needless to say. So you turn to Psalm 1. Turn to Psalm 1. And this history has left its mark on Germany. It has really left its mark uh, in, in a sense that people, especially in Eastern Germany, have turned away from the faith. And when I started soul winning in 2018, I went soul winning in my hometown, Görlitz, which is the easternmost town in Germany, close to Poland. And this was in the former German Democratic Republic, which was a socialist state. Germany was divided into West Germany and Eastern Germany. And I, I knocked on this lady's door, and she was, I was asking her if she was a Christian or something, and she basically told me, I'm a citizen of the German Democratic Republic. So I'm asking her, like, are you interested or something? Are you a Christian? 
I'm a citizen of the German Democratic Republic. So she's basically saying, no, I'm not interested in Christianity because I grew up in a socialist state. You know, and this socialist state has turned many people away from Christ, away from you know, religion in general, but most importantly, biblical Christianity, obviously. And over a year of going sowing there, I had no salvations. Now, that sounds pretty lame. So why I'm saying this uh, in a missions conference? You know, we're about missions, right? No salvations, cool. But, you know, it, 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 it gets exciting, though. It, it gets exciting if you stay with it. You know, things always get exciting if you don't give up, but if you stay with it. You know, that's something you need to know just for your life in general. Like, if you stay with something, it will get exciting someday. So look at Psalm 1, and we're going to proclaim with the palmist. The palmist who wrote these following words. <laughs> it says in verse 2, look at verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth, doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And what I want to focus here, it says that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You know, there are seasons for plants to bring forth fruit. So you're going to have a season in your life when you're bringing no, for, no fruit forth. You know, when you're not getting anyone saved. But you need to get through that season and just stay with it and don't give up and don't die. You, know, and you, you need to stay alive as a tree. And eventually you will bring forth fruit. You need to stay with it and it will get exciting. <clears throat> so then in 2019, I met a brother uh, in Dublin, Ireland, out of all places. It was a soul winning event that originally Pastor Anderson wanted to come to, but obviously he was banned from that country. But uh, I went to that event, it still happened, and I met a brother from Germany. Oh, well, you're from Germany too, that was kind of cool. And we basically started a group called Deutschland Seelengewinn, which means winning the souls of Germany. Basically, it was just us two, so it wasn't really something huge. <laughs> And uh, we just went sewing together in different cities, and I would meet up with him in Pforzheim, and he would come to me, to Görlitz. And eventually in Pforzheim, you know, uh, we did start for some time a, a, a church plant, and I'm going to touch on that later. And Western Germany really uh, proved to be more receptive than Eastern Germany. And part of the reason is socialism in Eastern Germany. You know, that's part of the reason. And Western Germany is just more Catholic, especially Southwestern Germany, where Pforzheim is in. It's just more Catholic. And, you know, we get Mexicans saved here, amen, and they are Catholics. So it's generally more, uh, more receptive. And my wife told me that when she was there in Pforzheim, she sometimes saw, you know, houses with some uh, Bible scripture over the, over, the, over the door. You can sometimes see that here where Mexicans would have, like, some Bible verse on their house. You know, it's, it's kind of the same thing. I don't see that in Eastern Germany at all. <clears throat> so then the group grew, and faithful work listeners would join, and uh, we organized successful soul winning marathons. And then in 2020, Brother Moses joined, and he had this crazy idea to start preaching. Now, it wasn't even my idea. Where is he? Oh, okay. <laughs> so Brother Moses had this idea, hey, when we do a soul winning marathon, you know, you could preach in German, I could preach in English. So he came up with this idea to preach the Bible, and oh boy, that was a good idea. That was a crazy idea. You can turn to Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3. Jeremiah 4, 3. I'm going to read to you from Ezekiel 34, 2. It says, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? And, you know, that's the situation in Germany where pastors, shepherds, are feeding themselves. They are not feeding the flock. They are not giving good Bible doctrine. They are not preaching the whole counsel of God. Most of them are damnable heretics. There are some saved pastors in Germany. 
There are some old IFB churches in Germany, praise God. But most of them are not serving God, they are damnable heretics, and they are leading people astray. And it needs new people to rise up, men to rise up and preach the whole counsel of God in a nation like that. And rebuke false prophets. So then in February of 2022, we had a great sowing marathon with nine soul winners come out and had eight salvations. So almost one salvation for every soul winner. We had a great experience. You know, it was one of the best events um, that I've been to. Just great spirit and new people joined and uh, so many salvations. And it's just a great experience to start something new, especially in a place like Germany, starting something new and knowing you know, finally, you know, people are actually going soul winning. And I'm sure there's some guy out there. I hope so. But, you know, finally there's a group that you can even find online. Because back in 2017, I was trying to find a group online, you know, soul winning Germany. I just typed it in. Nothing. So a couple years later, the dream came true. We had a soul winning group. Amen. And um, in that event in 2022, you know, um, I preached a sermon called Woe to the Sinful Nation. And uh, you turn to Jeremiah verse, chapter 4, verse 3, actually. Let me just read you that to you. It says, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. So the idea here is you need to break up the ground that has been all grown over with, you know, with, with thorns, with all, all these weeds that you don't want to have, you need to break it up and do something new. You know, don't sow among thorns. Don't try to reform uh, German Christianity. Don't try to reform the church or something. Just do something new. Just, just get over with it. Burn all the thorns. You know, they need to go away and do something new. Amen. And uh, I like to compare that to Matthew 13, 22. It says, I'm just going to read that to you. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becometh and he becometh unfruitful. So the, the word gets choked, you know, and we don't wanna we don't wanna have our efforts choked, you know, by by false Christianity. We don't want to try to reform the church or something. We just need to do something new. You know, just just get rid with the old stuff and do something new. And uh that is obviously just a cool experience, you know, being in Germany, which is a heathen nation, it's not a Christian nation anymore, and just doing something new, you know. That is, that is very motivating, and it always motivates me when I preach a sermon that, hey, you know, I'm giving doctrine to Germany, and it's, it's something that is lacking. Yeah. And Germany, German Christianity, I'm sorry, as a whole, is kind of thorns. You know, you just need to do something new. And like I said, during that sewing marathon, I preached a sermon, Woe to the Sinful Nation, and I kind of knew that this would get me into trouble. I already knew that. You know. Because in Germany, there's this law, it's called Volksverhetzung, which means like steering up the people you know, to, to hate or something, hate speech, basically. And I knew this existed, but you know what? Preaching the Bible is always right. It's just right. And before that, I'm just going to go over a couple of points, you know, just our history, how everything started, just to give you some background. Before that, we translated the Sodomite deception into German. We fully dubbed the whole documentary, and that got us into trouble. And Brother Moses did a great job with that. You know, he's really talented with dubbing documentaries. He did a great job. And um, there were multiple articles written about the documentary. And for some reason, I got all the, all the persecution. I didn't even do most of the work. It was mostly Brother Moses. But then I got mentioned. Because you're basically, you're, you're guilty if you're spreading hate. You know, you don't have to be the author. If you're the one who's spreading it publicly, you're guilty, and you can get charged. Then fast forward to March 2022. My home where I lived with my dad, 
got raided, you know, police showed up. And uh, I lived with my dad at home, and I just want to mention that because it's kind of cool. I, back in 2017, I um, sent an email to the church. I was asking, hey, you know, uh, is it better for a single guy to stay with his parents, or you know, is that okay to move out? And Brother Daniel Ryder, he um, answered that email, actually. I still have it. And he was saying, you know, based on that verse, it's better to stay with your parents. I don't know, you were like volunteering for the church or something. And uh, I took that advice and I stayed with my dad. And, you know, it's, it's not only old people telling younger people to stay with their uh, parents. You know, it's also a young guy like me telling you to stay with your parents until you're married. That's the right way. You know, and you will get blessed. And God blessed me. <clears throat> so... After I preached that sermon and before we did the sodomite deception translation and all that stuff, you know, multiple articles were written and my employer got contacted and he showed me this, this email on his phone. Like, it was like, you know, come over here. Okay, yes, sir. What's happening now? This is the day. So he showed me uh, this email on his phone which said, stop the hate 666, right? Define irony. That was the email address. <laughs> and he showed this email to me and said like, your employee, like he's spreading hate on Twitter. And he quoted this tweet where I said, LGBTQ, let God burn them quickly. And then, then my employer was like, he, he didn't even say something, he was just like, just whatever. So like, that was the coolest day in my life. <laughs> Mm. Then in March 2022, like I said, police shows up. So I wake up, I wanted to go to work, and police is in my room. You know, and uh, one of the police officers, he's like, are you Anselm Oban? Yep. So did you, like, I don't know, spread hate against homosexuals or something? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the, um, I don't know, What's the English word for that? But the letter that said, you know, we're going to raid your home. You know, this is what we're going to do. Warrant. warrant, yeah. Search warrant. So he showed it to me. And obviously, I couldn't resist. Like, there are like, I don't know, at least five police officers in my room. And uh, they took all my electronic devices, you know, phone, computer, whatever. Every storage media, like hard drives, disks, everything they could find to do an investigation on something that is online. Everything we've ever done is, is, is publicly available. Like, like, that's the reason why you're coming to my house, because it's publicly available. Yeah. And you want to investigate? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? It's madness. And <laughs> so, so this, this guy that first talked to me, I know him back from high school. Like, like, that was the weirdest moment in my life. I know the guy's name. You know, we had PE lessons together. It's like... <laughs> Man. And in that year, 2022, we saw a total of 134 people getting saved. You know, that was a great result. Shortly after, you know, March 2022, I don't know exactly the day, I didn't remember. Um, pastor called me, and so what you need to know is, even before, shortly before that, we were kind of adopted as a soul-winning outreach ministry by Faith Reward. And um, Pastor told me, hey, you need to get out of there, you know, get out of the European Union as fast as you can. And I'm like, okay, this is my ticket, I guess. I'm just going to leave. So... Left everything behind and uh, came to the U.S. through Mexico, jumped on a bus where the lady said, Nogales, that's something I understood. So I just hoped it would take me to Nogales, so it did, you know. But, uh, yeah, that year was a successful year anyways. In November 11, oh yeah, on November 11, I'm sorry, in November of that year, we had 11 soul winners and 24 salvations. That was a great event. 24 salvations in one day. Now, that's a great result. You don't have to go on a, on a cruise ship and fill your belly with all that good, 
all that good food to get 24 salvations, you can do it in Germany. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> but you can go on a cruise. I mean, it's, that's cool. And at the end of 2022, I had this idea to maybe turn the soul winning group into a church plant. So I brought it up to Pastor, and she was like, yeah, sounds like a good plan. So I was like, okay, I guess we have a church plant now. That's cool. Amen. And, uh, you know, obviously I made a plan, you know, how would this be viable? Can we do this? What do we need to do legally? Do we have the people? Um, and this worked out for some time. Now we're back to a soul winning group, which I think is the right decision. We should just stick with that and just continue going soul winning in Germany. And I'm always saying we because I kind of count myself in. It's uh, obviously something I care about, but yeah, I'm not physically there, but I still care about our soul winning group. It says in 1 Corinthians, you don't have to turn there, uh, chapter 16, verse 9, for a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Obviously, if you try to uh, build a church plant in Germany, this is something where you're going to have a lot of adversaries. You know, it's a great door that opened, but there are a lot of adversaries. We have perils or opposition by our own countrymen. You can turn to... Second Chronicles 16, Second Chronicles 16. It says in Matthew 13, 57, And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Especially in Germany, you will have opposition, you will have perils by your own countrymen. Especially if you want to start a soul winning group, let alone a church plant where actually the Bible is preached. Everything in the Bible. We never had any problems with Muslims. Not once. And in fact, the, almost the only people who ever let me in into their house were Muslims. They were super hospitable. They let me in. You know, we sat down, drank our tea, you know, it's kind of awkward because we couldn't really communicate a lot, but they were hospitable, you know, nice people in general. Never had any problems with Muslims, seriously. Only problems with Germans. And I say we because uh, back um, in Germany when I was going soul winning, eventually I had a silent partner from my church that I was going to. So yes, I went to church all the time, you know, uh, when I got saved in 2016, I always went to church, and you don't have an excuse to not go to church. Right. You know, don't say something like, well, but, you know, this and that, just go to church. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just do it. Like, you will survive, even in a liberal church. I survived many years in a liberal church, and I always prayed, you know, that I would just learn something and be a blessing. You know, it wasn't great, but I survived. <clears throat> And, yeah, with my silent partner, sometimes we, are, we were let in by Muslims, and I would kind of try to talk to them, but it wasn't really fruitful anyways, obviously. The only other people who ever let us in were Catholics. There was, like, this one, like, really uh, very uh, traditional type of Catholic couple. They let us in, and then they were like, well, we're going to ask, ask the father at church about what you told us or something. So I think, like, yeah, go ask your daddy at church who dresses like mommy. <laughs> you know, okay. Obviously, I didn't tell him that. But it's, it's kind of weird to say, you know, we're going to ask the father. <laughs> Young people are very receptive in Germany. You know, that's the good part. Very receptive, especially in Eastern Germany. Polish people, you know, Polish young people who are, like, kind of Catholic, but not really they just almost always get saved. I mean, I had great results going soul winning there, just talking to young people. Old people, super unreceptive. And uh, there was this one story, you know, a journalist came to our church band in, in Pforzheim and he, he was asked by someone if he is saved. And then he wrote his article and he was saying in the article, you know, and then they asked me if I was saved. Like as, as if that was some, like a crazy question. So obviously, Germans in general are kind of disconnected from Christianity. 
you know, but young people are receptive. We never had any problems with Muslims, only with Germans. Not the young Germans, but uh, German government, obviously, our own countrymen. Perils by the heathen. You are there in 2 Chronicles 16, verse 10. It says in 2 Chronicles 16, verse 10, And then Asa was wrath with the seer and put him in a prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. And what stood out to me when I read that verse? A, a king, a ruler, who is oppressing the seer, who is oppressing the prophet, who is oppressing Christians, you know, he's also oppressive to the people. You know, oppressing Christians is oppressing the people. And you kind of see that in Revelation chapter 12, where it jumps from the birth of Christ all the way to the, uh, to, to the tribulation, where the devil is obviously trying, you know, he's trying to kill Jesus, and he's uh, persecuting whole mankind. And kind of the picture there is that persecuting Jesus, persecuting Christians, is persecuting whole mankind. It's as bad. Because obviously, as Christians, we are truly on the side of people. We're truly on their side. We're in their boat. You know, we want to get them saved. We're not against them, but it's, it's them not realizing that we're for them. You know, that's really it. Perils by the heathen. You know, heathen rulers obviously being against us. Heathen like Sven Lehmann trying to stop us. Sven Lehmann is the queer commissioner of the German government. So Germany has a queer official who has millions of euros at his hands to indoctrinate people. Seriously. And I preached against this guy, you know. I called him out, obviously. And Germany is a country that literally has a homosexual in their government infiltrating, brainwashing people, and it's state-sanctioned. He's given millions of years. And obviously, you know, these people who sued us, he's one of them, other government officials, you know, they're always trying to find some false witnesses or bearing false witness. You can turn to Acts chapter 6, if you can, real quick. Acts chapter 6, I'm going to start reading in verse 9. It says, Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. Acts chapter 6, I started reading in verse 9. It says, And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God, and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law, and so on. So, obviously, they have to find some false witnesses. They have to bear false witness to condemn a righteous person. And we were... Um, we were... Um, What's the word? Basically, media reported about us that we're delegitimizing the state. And delegitimization of the state is actually something you can do in Germany. Like, it's, it's, it's a crime. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I, I told this one journalist who called me. I, I told her, it's like, look, what we're saying is that the state should have the power to put sodomites to death. So we're saying the state should have the power, but we're delegitimizing the state? <laughs> we're like doing the opposite. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, both mayors of Pforzheim suit me. So German cities, they have like two mayors, like a hat mayor and a deputy mayor, I don't know. Both mayors sued me because I called them out in a sermon because they were supporting a pride parade in Pforzheim. And the, the, the patron uh, or patroness of the Pride Parade is the female dean of the Protestant church in Fortsheim. Wow. I mean, it's, it's a church official. 
being the patroness of a proctorate. And you know what she said in, in an interview? She said, well, you can't just rent a space and just say whatever you want. I'm like, I'm like, shut up. Yes, actually, we can. That's what we do. It's like, you, you can't just rent a space and like say whatever you want. I mean, you can't just do that, right? You know, how about she keeps silence? Isn't that what the Bible says? That women ought to keep silence in the church? Perils among false sisters. Perils among false sisters. 2023 is the year when a church sued a church for preaching the Bible. I mean, I'm not kidding. <laughs> a church, Protestant church, suing our church plant, or people of our church plant, I don't even know it. Whatever, I'm here, so I don't care. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, right? I mean, nothing's happening to me. <coughs> suing us for preaching the Bible, for anti-Semitism or something. That is Germany, my friend. You can go to Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33. I'm going to read to you from 1 Samuel 14, verse 6. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And I was thinking of this verse you know, regarding our uh, former church plant. You know, why would you even do something like that? But obviously, if you want to do something like that, it's like, well, we can try. You know, we can give it a shot. God can work something out. And if it doesn't work out, well, then it is what it is. We've tried it, you know. And I, I told um, the people of our soul winning group, I told them, look, we don't want to be like the, like the apostles in the book of Acts for trying to get the Jews saved. Like, if don't, they don't want to get saved, if they're against us, you know, whatever, okay. We don't want to be so stubborn, you know, and uh, just try to go to the Jews. So, you know, if it doesn't work out, you know, we can just switch back to being a, a soul winning club because soul winning, you know, that works in Germany. It's perfectly legal. You can go soul winning, you can get people saved, but obviously you will have problems if you're preaching the whole counsel of God. Yeah. You know. So having a church plant in Germany, you know, it, it might not be, as of now, 100% viable. But, you know, we're still uh, preaching the Bible, not only the gospel, but um, we're planning for Christmas, like a Christmas party, and... You know, brethren from our uh, soul winning club, they, they could take turns in preaching and have like a small preaching service. We can do stuff like that uh, occasionally, obviously, and every month we're still having soul winning marathons like before, and I'm still preaching every month, every month in German live over YouTube. So we're still doing that, you know. And I think that's great, and I think, you know, having come to the U.S., is actually kind of a blessing because I can say everything I want and don't have, you know, consequences like, oh, hate speech, and now you're getting sued and have to pay a fine of a thousand euros, you know, and I can still be a blessing to people in Germany. You know, that's cool. In Ezekiel 33, verse 6, it says, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. And when we're reading these verses, obviously it kind of stands out that uh, a watchman, or you could say a preacher, has a very big responsibility. But also what I notice is, and I'm going to call this spiritual oppression. You know, people are, are dying 
are going to hell without even getting a warning. You know, that's the other part in the, these verses. And, and, and that's sad. You know, think about it. There are people who are dying, they are going to hell, and they are not getting any warning at all. Because preachers fail. Preachers in Germany suck. They are not preaching from the housetops. You know, Baptist churches exist. There are some good Baptist churches, I would even say, but they are still kind of dead. Like, show me the Baptist church in Germany with a strong soul-winning program. Show me the Baptist church in Germany where the whole counsel of God is preached. <clears throat> and I'm saying preach from the housetops. Like, yeah, maybe behind closed doors they are saying everything, but not on YouTube because it would get them consequences. But, you know, it's great that these churches exist because there need to be churches like that that are kind of dead and kind of watered down for people to go to, you know, who don't necessarily want to have all this persecution in their lives. You know. <clears throat> and we need to break people free from spiritual oppression. You know, people going to hell without getting a warning, we need to give them a warning. People in Germany, Germany need to get warned. And men need, men need to rise up in Germany and bring true spiritual liberty to people. And they have to just not care about perils by their own countrymen, perils by heathen, perils by false brethren or sisters or whatever. They just need to serve God against all odds. Amen. And, you know, our soul winning club in Germany, it's, it's really a group of people who been through a lot. I mean, I'm thinking of my friend who got his house raided. I'm thinking of two other brothers, Brother Moses. Um, police also came to his home. You know, and people losing their jobs. You know, they are still going soul winning every week, consistently soul winning every Saturday. There's soul winning happening in Germany, and they are not stopping, and that is awesome. That is great. And they just need to keep doing what they're doing. You know, consistency is the key. Just keep on soul winning. And I just want to say this in closing. Obviously, you know, you could ask yourselves, well, how does that apply to my life? You know, I'm here in the U.S. What could happen here? But what the Bible says is still true, that in uh, Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 12, it says, Yea, and all that live will, will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You know, that is still true. You will still eventually suffer persecution. And persecution can be very different for a lot of people. You know, it can be different based on your personality, can be different based on your circumstances. Obviously, you know, a single guy getting persecuted in Germany, having to leave everything, you know, that is still kind of easy in the sense that he doesn't have a family to care for. You know. But it's either way, it's still true that getting persecuted is something we should be happy about, based on what the Bible is saying. We should leave for joy. That is what the Bible is saying. And you might be stressing, well, how could I ever go through persecution? I don't think I can do it. But you just need to think about the fact that the Bible is saying in, in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, it says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is come to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So it doesn't really matter in what circumstances you are. You know, if you have a big family, if you have no family, what your circumstances are, the, the kind of persecution that God may bring into your life, that God allows in your life, is the persecution that you can endure. Amen. It's the persecution that you can endure. That's why it's happening. God allowed it in your life. So you don't need to stress about it. And obviously that's easier said than done. I know that. But you need to be mentally prepared. Meaning, not just holding on to the things of this world. You can't be prepared for everything. But you can be prepared in the sense that you're not just holding on to the things of this world. And I thought of an illustration. You know, uh, years ago I was in a swimming team. 
and our coach ex explained to us how you can dive through a whole swimming lane, you know, from one end to the other. And if you have never done this, it kind of seems impossible, like how can I dive from one end to the other? But here's the trick, what he told us. You need to, like, once you feel like I don't have enough air, I can't make it, you need to actually blow out. You need to let go of air. And it sounds extremely counterintuitive. Like, this does not make sense, but it actually works. Like, I've tried it, and if you feel like I can't make it to the end, you know, I can't dive to the end, you need to blow out, you need to let go, and you will make it to the end. So you need to let go of some things in your life. You need to not hold on too tightly to the things of this world, and you can make it. The Christian life is counterintuitive. And sometimes you need to serve God against all odds. And you need to be able to let go of things, and sometimes even people. You know, and there were a lot of times when I prayed back in Germany, you know, God, if, if you want me to go to whatever place, you know, I will leave this and that person. And I thought of specific people. Like, God, if, if you want me to go, I, I will go and I will leave them. If that is God, what, what God wants for you, you need to be mentally prepared. Yes, I'm going to go. And I hope that, you know, what Brother Dylan Oz preached and, you know, kind of the history and uh, what we've been through, what I've, I've talked about, that that was, would be an encouragement to you to serve God better and to truly be blessed, you know, by not just reading the Bible but living the Bible and by serving God even if everything seems to be against that. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this uh, wonderful conference, Lord, and Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to preach. Lord, and I, I thank you for our soul winning club in Germany and that people are getting saved in Pforzheim and all over Germany, Lord. I pray that you would still bless our ministry and would allow us to continue doing this and please bless everyone in Germany who is soul winning, who is faithful to church. Bless the churches that are there, who, that are good churches, Lord, and please stir up people in those churches to go soul winning and serve you better, Lord, and please bless every one of us when we go our separate ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.